in four, three, two. You know what? We're actually live. This is 2OF Entertainment. Welcome to the Lost Dollar Business Club, where we talk about business, 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 and not just business. We talk about what makes businesses go up and what makes businesses go down. If you're interested in businesses, this is where it is. We talk about the global economy. We talk about global politics. We talk about everything and anything business related that affects your life on a global scale as well as a local scale. And don't miss after the show, Lost and Found. Yeah, Good all the right morning, buttons. various members and guests. <laughs> yeah, well, we're missing we're missing David, who's on holiday for a, excuse me for a fortnight. But you know what he did before he left is he set up our merchandise doing? store tied to YouTube. So I think as of next week, you can buy merch from YouTube that has like coffee mugs and all the stuff that we've had before. But now we've got more stuff because he's tied it into some other company that works with YouTube. So now you can just, I, I think the link automatically shows up or something. So yeah, so now we're being become merch whores. So you can have your Lost merch. Dollar Business Club, caps, t-shirts, dog bowls, uh, whatever you Shower want. Shower curtains? Shower curtains? So I, you know what? I bet you if you ask David that he would come up with Lost Dollar Business Club shower curtains. Yes. David needs to do that. We need we need the yeah. shower curtains. Yeah. Uh, well, t- when David comes back in a fortnight, tell David. The Lost that, Dollar oh, Business oh, Club. Shower in the curtains. Back. <laughs> that's right you go when you go to the when you go to the loo you need to see our shower curtain there you go that's right john sure. what do you think john's excited john wants two one? shower curtains he has a oh, one yeah, bedroom so one much. bath but he wants two sets of shower curtains because he's that excited, excited. yeah super excited <laughs> <laughs> <Good God. laughs> Steven's on the roll this morning that's good so you're um, making up for david missing that's fine and before we get into our introducing our amazing uh wonderful and beautiful guest today Wow, you suck it Michael, up. <laughs> Michael <laughs> Collins and our multinational conversation is coming back next week. Yeah. Uh, so stay tuned for that one. A quick preview for everybody there. But today we're talking about Bendicoot, one of the show's sponsors. Ooh. So Bendicoot, co-founder Nushana and I founded this two years ago, and we actually right. are going to have her on the show today. Wow. And we're right. going to explore remote work, the rural renaissance. And anything right. Nushan wants to talk about. Oh, well, John, are you ready for this? That's John's just AI. He's frozen. He's frozen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's frozen. He doesn't hear anything. <laughs> That's actually John in real life, just so you know. We go, we ask him questions in meetings, and John's just like, we're like, okay, John's just really here. John, you're good with us? Yeah, I'm kind good. of. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's early today. Go, All right, boys and girls, here, let's pay a bill really quick before we bring Nushan. Get the freedom and the flexibility of remote work in the lucrative tech industry. Bend your life around, around the world. Bendicoot is the premier course and community for thriving in a remote tech career. Join the revolution today. Bendicoot.com, official partner of the Lost Dollar Business Club. And there you go. And there she is. There. I think she should be. I think she'd be over there. She should be there. Actually, no. There we go. There we go. I was not the aware of the little bit that you did. What was this? <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Real love, Lucian. God, you, you are from San Francisco, Michael. That was hilarious. I'm going to put well, my I, creative in there. Yeah, we do need we do need Nishana's creative creative uh, creative viewpoints on that Listen. commercial. But we've got to collaborate with David on that one. Oh yeah, yes, good I luck with will. that. Yes, I will. Oh, right, no. <laughs> yeah, this just for the people that have never seen um, Noosh's show. Noosh actually used to have a show on our channel, um, and she's been coming back now for the last, I don't know, year. Um, and she's been collaborating, David, not really, for that amount of time. So, yeah, so we should see a new commercial probably, what, when the children you don't have are in university? So we'll be oh, looking forward to it. So. Blow, 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 blow. No, I know. I, well, know. whoa, whoa, whoa. I, that, that girl's not here. Go ahead. So. It, oh, it's too early for that. <laughs> no, it's not, not. Not too early for one of you guys. Yeah. Yeah. No, listen, I've been up for a while. Like I, like I said before the sh- like I said before the show, unfortunately, or fortunately, unfortunately, I've been up for a while because we're doing something. Unfortunately, the Cigar and Scott show is after this show, yeah. which will be live. 
Um, so you guys, since I'm not smoking a cigar or drinking scotch right now, which I will be in about an hour. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe you should smoke it, you know, maybe you should smoke it. I know, right? Because <laughs> no, no, I, I have to be up, I have to be up for my, my two Pakistani co-hosts because um, you never know where that show is going to end up. This show, I can, I'll come down to John, I'm sorry, I'll, um, I'll be, I'll just bring it down a little bit so we'll be okay. So we're going to talk about Ben DeCoot and you Michael and, and, and oh, Michelle. Yeah. And there you go. And so Michael and Nushana are co- are co-founders, and John mm-hmm. and I are going to ask questions. I guess, or they're going to just tell us. Got to do it. You got to be a thirty-minute. It's either going to be a thirty-minute commercial, or it's going to be a real show today. And then oh, after Ben Dekut, we're going to do would, Lost and Found as always. I would love questions. I'm all I'm all for the interview. Bring okay, it I have on. a question. All right, here's my first question. Here if a wood if a woodchucker ch- could chuck wood, how much wood would a woodchucker chuck if a wood cut chuck cut wood? No, 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 no. Okay, well, I'll say it again first properly, and then I might answer you. <laughs> I know, right? It's been a long day. Um, so tell us about ben. Yeah, right. so, tell us about Bendicoot. So tell us the premise of what, why it started. Tell us where you are today and where you want to go and where you think you're going to go, and what does the outlook look like let's go through all that first so people get an idea of the whole the whole premise of it look it's like the whole question basically so i can talk about it for half an hour he's smart right right? and then we can all not we can all not off go have breakfast come back yeah we're good (laughs) you know you know if we're not here if we do this oh that's true so So go ahead well so the way that it started uh when we first moved up here with michael which is in washington county upstate new york uh we uh, really love the area so much and we both like michael and i like he's probably like the only person that i met who has such a huge drive to figure out things to help the community you know like that's not something that most people have so much as we both we do so even before we were here that's something amazing that we always had in common but then when we came up here uh, we wanted to be a part of the community. We got on different boards. I became the president of my chamber of commerce. And then by doing all of that, we realized the challenges of this beautiful county, which then we learned was the second poorest county. In I don't know if it's in Washington County only or in New York State. I don't know. Well, but New York State, yeah. It's very low. Okay. So, okay. and the thing is, you w- when you come here, you wouldn't, believe it because everything is beautiful there's like such a disparity between you know like the beautiful houses with rich people and then everybody else we just don't see where they live but there's so much poverty and then eventually with uh, the town supervisor when we did the median last year of the town income to be able to see if we can get grants for the sewer system that we've been trying to do for 50 years apparently the household income is less than 40 grand per household and a household usually has a few people in it so that's michael and i were like all right this is uh not enough for us just sitting on boards and trying to do good like little by little like we need to really find a way to move the needle forward and then after thinking together you know what michael has he's the computron he has like all those amazing computer skills and i'm the humanist (laughs) Together, we started building a course with what we know best. He knows best remote work. And I know how, and I've been doing that for 20 years, how to help all humans of all kinds to really find the fine tuning of your body and your mind to be the most productive and happy person that you can be every single day. That's another, is that another, that's another course, right? How to be no, happy. Human being, right? <laughs> it could be, but we decided like, first we did all the technical stuff with Michael. And then okay. the that I see the most in America, like, mostly in America is the burnout, you know, that right. you, know, Stephen, you don't have, but it's a problem for a lot of people. <laughs> they don't have, like you have a mini vacation every day. Like, you know how to organize right. yourself. You wake up at four, you work out, you know how to use your machine so that it's tip top working every single right. day. Most people don't have those, those skills because nobody's teaching them. And that is something that we're teaching in the mastery course so that people right. not only can thrive in their jobs, they can thrive in their lives, knowing exactly what to do to be able to do so. So that's where Bendicoot was born. So that was almost two years okay. ago. Uh, two years later, we are fully ready with our course and we have been working on two deals 
one international, one more close to home uh, with educational systems that are really excited about this course because remote work is here to stay. And now with okay. the development of AI and all those amazing tools, that's something also that we touch in uh, with our course and we're doing panels on that in the fall uh, for those entities. So you, it's- let me, let me ask you this, when you say, and Michael knows where I'm gonna head with this. So when you say AI, you don't really, so, as we all know, OS or Chachi came out with these. They're saying they're, they're going to be now cognitive learning AI, which it really isn't, right? It's still reading a book. So it's yeah. not really AI. It's just it's just a glorified computer giving you answers. So there's a I difference mean, between real AI and, and what people think AI is, say, like ChatGPT, Gemini, um, all that stuff isn't real AI. Open AI isn't really AI. It's just that they've taken a word and said, here's 8,000 different ways you can look at this word where there's real companies that are doing real AI. So are you, and, and I'm not trying to belittle what you're doing, but are you teaching just how to speak to ChatGBT so they get the proper answer? Or are you saying, we're gonna teach you how to use like proper AI? Like, you know, the how from 9001 right, so, or 2001. <laughs> so when I, AI started a year and a half ago, we we're going to brunch with Michael and I was working on a song right. with my ukulele. I couldn't find a verse. Like, well, like, why don't you ask ChatGBT <laughs> to which I was like, what the actual focaccia? Are you crazy? But right. you know, not close minded. So I asked oh, yeah. him very nicely, like, and I called him Chad right away. Like, I don't right. want to talk to an it. So it's a he yeah, and yeah. he's Chad. And now I love him. But back then I was like, all right, Chad, hi, could you please uh, help me figure out 12 rhyming sonnets in Alexandrians talking in a very whimsical and sweet way that will bring the nostalgia of old Russia and my French bubbling self about watering right. dragonflies? And he did under like 10 yeah. seconds and I read and I started crying because it was good. I was like, oh my God, like what the hell is this? This is going to ruin every, every poet, every artist, everyone's mm -hmm. life. But then, you know, I come down, we arrived at the bakery. Everybody was like, what's going on? It's like, what do you know what's going on? Don't you know? Chat GPT is out. But I had a croissant, you know, I calmed down and then I read it oh, again. And I was like, you know, it's, it's, not as, it. I'm one of those. it's not as good as Mia. I still took two verses that were pretty good, but it's good, yeah. but it's not. And then little by little over the year, I did do a lot of things with it, including some uh, some art with Dali, which is great because right. my favorite, one of my favorite artists is Salvador Dali. But so for me, the proper way to have been using AI is not to just get answers and mindless is like, here, give me, like, feed me everything, is to really have a conversation with Let's say it's as if you would have an, a conversation with an encyclopedia that can answer to you very specifically because my prompts are really, really, really long and really, really specific. And we keep going very right. specific along the way. So I can actually narrow it down to something that I'm really looking to do. It's not, I know what you mean by proper AI, which people, that's the risk, right. you know, like we're going to either completely become dumb with like all those kids that do all the homework. It's like, here, give me the answers. Well, no, there's a, there's a difference. So ChatGPT and OpenAI is an AI. Chat, let's just be, let's, whatever. Um, and you've sang some of your, on your show. Right, aren't we gonna, link to, aren't we're we listening to Bentecourt? Yeah, oh. but we're going to talk about other things too. It's, that's the way it works. Um, but you can listen to uh, Noosh playing the ukulele on her show, which we're going to link after the show. It'll be I mean, in like a box. So you can yeah. Noosh is right no, there. No, don't, 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 yeah, don't, don't, don't scare the fans. Um, Noosh's bits. Um, or you can sing at the end. Um, so, but ChatGBT and OpenAI isn't AI. Let's just be clear of what it really is. It's just a computer program. So, and, and everyone calls it AI because no one knows the difference. So there's a difference to it. So, so I'm just saying, so, but there are companies out there that are Steven's making been learning AI. a lot. Steven's been learning a lot about AI for a, future, for a future show. Mm. Yeah, no, well, no, I mean, I knew a lot about this, but um, now that we've written a few checks, I'm learning more and it's getting annoying to me when I read these articles about AI. And I'm like, that's not AI. That's just right. basically okay. reading it. So anyway, so you're using, no, you're using AI. It's an artificial intelligence. I understand it. It's right. not an entity right. that is smart and can reflect. Right. Right. So I, as I just said, so I'm not going to call it AI. I'm calling him Chad, yeah. which is an Chaz. entity. Okay, we're using Chad. Like an encyclopedia. A male, a male stripper. A lot of, okay. <laughs> so he's like a talking encyclopedia to me. So instead of right, me right, right. looking through all the books and finding answers, I'm asking him the answers and he feeds me information that I can find anywhere else, but much faster than me. So right. this is all right. So I'll call That's him. Perfect. So 
You don't have to call him AI. Yeah, we can just call him Chad. That's in, I like actually that's a perfect description. I mean, he is a, for lack of a better term, living encyclopedia that can give you anything you need immediately. I like exactly. it. That's a great description. I mean, the thing Beautiful. Is like, it is, and so the thing that we, I mean, when we did like you know like all the numbers for Benzicoot, for example, yeah. we yeah. wanted to know across the United States in every state in towns of less than fifteen hundred people. How many right. people were unemployed between the age of 18 and 25? For me right. to find that information would take me, yeah. I don't even know how long. He gives it to me right away. Right. So it's, a, it, okay, we don't have to call him AI, but it's an amazing tool if you know how to use it properly. Right. They can right. be you have really to ask it the right questions, right. Exactly. And that's a part of the mastery course, right? Okay. And that's what we teach. That's what we teach. But that's, okay. you know, like AI is a very tiny part of what right. we teach. I'm going to a conference next That's week. Right. And the keynote right. speaker, he wrote the books and I forgot his name, but but he's going to be speaking about AI. Me, I'm just like in our panels that we're going to start doing with Michael, we're just showing right. students his perspective, my perspective, and how important right. it is to really use it, as you say, the right way and understand right. that this person with sentiments and everything even though the other day he told me oh my god Nush, this was so wonderful you have such an amazing creativity i'm so proud of you you know he's mimicking and it might be nice for some people they're lonely at home they don't have any friends and they have oh there's an ai there's a there's an app for that it's it's called like happy ai or something where you go i don't feel good today and it just compliments you um all day um we sent one to hitler we're gonna see and trump we're gonna see how they do with that um so i'm just saying all right so you know, how many courses say, though, like just like to yeah. finish i'm excited to use the one by uh what's his name musk because the thing is Brock. that chad, chad cannot do chad cannot do anything bad or any bad imaging or any like like uh, he bi binded by i don't know like almost like jesus or the holy grail of, <laughs> of sweetness you know he no, can do bad things. Right, the Puritans. The dark things, you know, like I can't even like I have like this picture of a mountain that I wanted to do with with a breast that is melting at the top of the mountain and then spritz. Oh, there's and nothing like a good breast on a mountain, gray, you know, like into yeah. clouds. He can't yeah, do yeah. that because they have restrictions. Yeah. Right. So, 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 right, so let's let's yeah, really put Elon to the side. We're gonna put, yeah, we're gonna put, yeah, 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 we're gonna put Elon to the side yeah. because nobody really cares about him. So. No, no, I, I don't care about him. I want. I want I, to nobody does. Nobody. You know, yeah, well, he's, you know, hopefully, him, he's hopefully like, going to. He'll save some astronauts this week because Boeing can't run a ship. Anyway, so you know, how many courses? How many so, courses do you? If I if I want to sign up for Bendiku, how many yeah. courses are there in total? Because you said you have the mastery. Oh, the mastery yeah, seems yeah. that AI is the mastery, and I'm sure there's yeah. others. So AI take, is take me through. Tiny part take me through. You know, I know. Take me. Take me through. Like. And I'm, I'm somewhat facetious, dummy's guide to from yes. dummy's guide to mastery to then what's the end. So take me through like how long it takes, all the courses, everything. So the one that we're focusing on right now is a three month length uh, course okay. because uh, we have the option that we're really pushing for Michael to do coaching weekly. So for three months, okay. every week you'll come and there will be content relevant to each part of the course. And the course is to get you into remote tech jobs that are non-technical, right. I think I forgot to say that. Uh, so the courses, is, there are three courses. The first one is choose your adventure to see what your abilities are, you know, like PR, marketing, sales, whatever, like all those non-technical jobs. Once you have that, Michael, well, mostly Michael and I a little bit, we we built the, the part where you create you know how to create a good resume, how you create your LinkedIn, how you, you know, get connected to as yet as I call your sphere of influence, your spheres of influence. So whoever that you want to gravitate around or anybody who has uh, the jobs that you have, you start connecting with them so they can give you, I don't know, feedback on your resume or tips on how to do this or that, so that you start getting involved with people. So all of that, and then the mastery uh, we take you through, which is the longest bit of the course, through the uh, mastery mountain, which is both personal and professional tips on how to really create an environment through all your knowledge and the connections with people, and then into the whole state at the at the top to master mm -hmm. your growing and your flowing self in the job yeah. on both your personal and professional side and that's an ongoing journey that you will do throughout your life with like tips that we we take for you to discover 
as a, you know, if you never heard about them, but you can tweak them and you should tweak them throughout your life because what worked for you when you were 20 might be not something that works for you when you're 60. So you'll always have to mindfully adjust yourself and adjust your practices and keep mindfully, you know, like, like, like we really insist on not, which I think the problem is like, it's like, it's so we've been producing like in such a robotic way, like, you know, like produce, 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 like without really taking care enough time to just, you know, step back and like, all right, like, is this good for me as well as my job? So that like, I'm not, you know, depressed on Prozac or like, like want to like hang myself <laughs> at the end of the week, you know, like, but that's the burnout, well, you know, the week, the week, the week people should oh. hang them. The week people should hang themselves and take Prozac. Yes. I agree with that. Now. Um, so I take your court. Well, they shouldn't. They shouldn't take Prozac. I agree. Weak people don't take Prozac. Just hang no, yourself. Let's you know, make like, room for others. Okay. So after I take the course or during the during the course, yeah. At some point, and I don't. And I mean, I know when you started it. So do you help with job placement? Um, so, this, so how does that work if I take so the course? So the second wave, which we're going to be start, mm -hmm. we'll be starting to implement that over the fall. We are looking to partner with uh, recruiters and um, okay. and so that we will have that eventually on the website so that not only you'll have the course, but then you will be able to have placement, you know, within the county that you will be in. So, yeah, that's something that we're working on. It's not available on our website yet, but this is the next okay. stage. For us. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, creating. Yeah, tell them, I mean, creating. Tell a little bit about the vision around the rural renaissance and how this is using through the right. partnerships to really start in Washington County, but yeah. really this could be a model. We want this to be a model for the nation and the globe. Exactly. So okay. so the, the way that we are foreseeing the future for Bandicoot, so first we find the people and, and, and promote the course in rural areas for people to okay. be able to stay. And then so we are in the process of purchasing a building that will be adjacent to the venture where educational centers or universities will be partnering with us so that we have a satellite spot with computers for people to be able to upskill upskill themselves uh, okay. in places that are very tiny, which is the goal uh, for us. And then once we have that model here in Washington County, then we can just like spread it around everywhere. Because the thing is like, no matter how fast they're trying to do it, and we've been working with people at the county, like broadband is, a really big headache and it's not happening as fast as people want. And the reality is that a lot of families don't have still access to internet and therefore, you know, and the kids don't obviously have cars to go to towns 40, 50 minutes or an hour away from their homes to be able to get the education that they could if there was a center here, which ideally down the road, we want to be uh, like turn it into a nonprofit so that it's just for them to come and be able to better themselves and one you know we raise the level if we can get one person per family to work in remote jobs their salary started 65 grand a year that will raise the whole town it will right. turn everything around because they don't have to and drive then, they don't use gas like they can stay with their kids yeah. like a lot of families here you know like they work two three jobs and they have kids to take care of the elderly to take care of and they're running around driving around it's it's crazy you know it's not sustainable yeah. You know, like the, so the, yeah. if if I want to, if I'm somebody, well, if I don't have internet, it's going to be hard to take your course. <laughs> so someone, just somebody, someone's not going to be able to take it through, like you know, mental telepathy. But so someone watching this, let's say, and and I'm going to use this town because it's the one that David likes to pick on, and no snobs or knobs. Beaverlick, Kentucky, with a population of 629, there's a real town called Beaverlick, Kentucky. So if I'm in Beaverlick, <laughs> and 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 I leaned over as one of our big fans there. Um, if I'm in Beaverlick and there's 626 people, oh. how much does the course then cost me? If I go, you know what, I I don't I want to do something other than just take care of my grandchildren. Mm. And now, how much does Grandma now or Auntie or whoever about would pay now to take your three month course um, to learn things that they may not know because they've been out of the workforce for a while? It's just something that's never occurred to them, or they're mm -hmm. doing their LinkedIn wrong or whatever it might be, or they don't know how to use Chaz. Um, how does that, um, yeah, how does that, right. how does that yeah. work? So, so we really want this again, like this is not a venture for us to become billionaires. Although of course it'll be nice because then we can do much better, bigger ventures, but we really wanted to make the course accessible because if you, so how much is the price right now, Michael, remind me 
for the well, three months. Well, the three months with the coaching is five fifty five. Five fifty five. Five dollars so, and fifty five cents. That is reasonable, everybody. <laughs> Very <saying>. reasonable. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But we we made it in this bracket so that if you qualify, if you really have a very low income, you can go to your right. workforce uh, career center in your town, and there are organizations right. that in New York. For now, for now, it's in New York. It only yeah. for the time okay. being, only in New York State. But uh, yeah, that that's going to be for the rest of the year. So they'll the they'll spring. pay for the course, or they'll subsidize them. They'll pay. Uh, for, they'll they'll pay for they'll the pay course. For it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so cool. If somebody okay. really needs the help. As long as you prove right. that you're serious, you go to your county county career center, and they will sponsor right. you for the entire course. Yeah. Which is very nice. Think, okay. You know, like, so there's options. There's options. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, we run specials and we do different things. Oh, yes. make it buy one get one free. Sure. Mention the show, <laughs> get ten percent off. Yeah, I got it. So I like that. I mean, I remember when you started two years yes. ago with. And I, I remember all that. And I remember yeah. I read some stuff and I was like, okay. So it's nice to see that it's gone from A to almost Z. So it's very cool to see that now. That, wow. that it's grown it's like into like what it is. From A to how, well, like yeah. how many people have taken the course? Say that again. How, how many, many people have taken, taken the, course? the course? I have no idea. That's the metric. No one. We one? had we had one this year. This was our first very year with cool. the school. We had one course, one person take it. Uh, right. And he actually ended up buying a, uh, or taking over his father's automotive business. And so he didn't end up going into non-technical right. positions, but maybe the course helped him uh, prove himself a little bit more to his father so he could take over the business. Because the thing is, so like, so the whole course of course is to, especially the first two parts is to find a lucrative job in the non-technical tech industry for you to be working remotely but the mastery is really something yes. that anybody can take and any job yeah. will be useful for any person in the workforce okay 100%. that's the, that's so what's the mastery i know you, we talked about jazz what else does the mastery teach us so the mastery just like really analyzes, you know, like you sit down, we have a, a bunch of homework for you to do to see like, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Just like really look at yourself in the mirror and know what you're working with. Right, so, right, right. and then from there, we give you tools to better wherever you're not good at and to like, like kind of like keep blooming, keep watering the qualities that you have and even develop them in ways that you might not see. And also we teach a lot of, of the things that help you like for example when you're working at the desk a lot you know like to right. not become completely sick by the time you're 60 or 70 we show you for example exercises to do at the desk you know like squeeze right. your butt every hour because especially for men like for now, when you say that when you say squeeze no, your butt I, every no, hour yeah i appreciate it because i was gonna say when i do that at the office i realize the staff doesn't enjoy it every hour I, I found that out that's why i was just saying so it's you're talking about your own but, butt. Like my brain just like threw me in there with that example all right well, yeah, that example, that example, you, know, yeah. you should always get up like every hour or two and get on your tippy toes or like stretch your yeah. side you know like breathing is very important this country when i moved here and that's why meditation is such like you know like a, was a hip thing and i, I think because people don't breathe here. Nobody teaches right. teaches them that. Like that, you know, like lowers, like calms down like your whole nervous system when you do like physiological yeah. breath. You know, and for people that are prone to being anxious or stressed, essential oils, nobody knows about that. Like, like the scent okay. is something that's the first thing you develop in your mother's womb. That's why it's so developed. That's why like with meditation, it can really put you exactly in the state that you're looking for if you know how to do it. So it's okay. from, you know, like holistic things like that to a lot of other things that you can do to develop yourself yeah. on the professional side. So it's very, it's, right. it's very let, wide and large. Let, and me ask, let me ask the question then. If I'm a corporation and my people are working, right? Cause you know, we chain them to their desk and squeeze their butts every hour. Um, <laughs> if, if we're doing that, do I, and I don't want, I don't need them to take the beginning. Can they just no. take the mastery? So the no. mastery, they learn all the other stuff. So if, they, if I'm a company and I just, yeah. okay. So if I'm a company and I want to buy the mastery for my people, Mm -hmm. yeah. How much does the mastery cost? Because it's not now the whole course. So what's the mastery only? I mean, if an entire company wants to do it, or I'll just a person, negotiate. yeah. But a single person can take it for one fifty-seven. It's is very reasonable. Okay. That's not that's very, not bad. But so we're working. We I, I'm in the talks with a with a few educational entities to upscale their personnel 
with right. only the mastery. And that will be a presentation that I'll be making online or in person, depending on where, where the thing sure. is. So, so I like the mastery thing. I think there's a lot to that for people, whether you work in an office or you work remotely, yeah. I think there's a lot to teaching people. And I have to go back to squeezing the butt, your own butt, not your coworkers, unless <laughs> they approve and you have to get them to sign a form. Um, but that, I mean, we know, the stretching, we know that. Yeah, it's like they, they yeah. Kegel exercises, but men should be doing it too. Uh, men should they, always squeeze butts uh, and you yeah. just do it and blame it on your other coworker. But anyway, <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I think that and the oils and this, I think all of that, I think, you know, since we're in, and you know, I'm going to make kind of fun of it. The Namby Pamby society we are today, I mm. think for the workers to make them feel better, mm. this is an essential part of that. Mm. Um, cause remember I'm old school. You just, you just work. You're like nothing. Yeah. You don't no, get sick. Right. You just yeah. work. Right. It, it's the, it's a, F, of a certain age, they need all this and I'm, I'm all for it. Mm. Um, so I think the mastery course, if I'm a company, even an investment bank, um, I think it's perfect for them. I like that. I like the fact that you can, you know, learn things that you may not know. Most people can figure out Chaz, right? But a yeah. little extra help doesn't hurt. But the oils, the exercising, well, the breathing, all of that is, I think that's a, I think that itself is, is worth the, the Nish, 157. The other, a lot of people the don't other know. side of it too, Nush. The, uh, the other side is just also mastering yourself as a remote worker. I mean, as a worker okay. in general, but also there's a part of it too that's mastering remote work, using the tools, communicating, being proactive. Um, doing things to make sure that as a remote worker or as a as a as an in office worker, things that right. you need to do, the the attitude that you should have, that sometimes people don't, <laughs> and need to be told. You know, there's like another thing. Like I followed this this lady, and uh, and she was talking uh, about you know like yourself, like with your career and your life, and that. The thing that is tricky these days is that people don't really think when they decide to do something, am I respecting myself by doing that? Meaning like just eating like, you know, like a whole bag of chips at night and I know I'm going to wake up feeling, you know, like sugar. Is that respecting myself? You know, like every decision that you make, everything that you put in your mind, everything that you put in your body has an incident impact on everything else that you'll be doing and by adding on those things and by kind of like rethinking it that way like is this respectful to me my body or my mind or the person that i'm trying to become like you right. know so yes it's mm -hmm. like like mindful and more conscious instead of automatically just do automatically just drink a coke and a burger like maybe a water would be better because you have you know like just mindfully choosing everything you do every day that's the goal you, of the mastery. I, I give you, I give you kudos to think that the the population as a whole has IQ points for that. So I like that, um, um, and that goes back to the weak people that are hanging themselves because they can't do this. Um, but the people uh, that are strong should do this. Why? Which, once again, you're the. I didn't say it. You did. I'm just bringing it up. I'm reinforcing. Um, I, I I've seen bits and pieces of the course because you've sent it to me over time, and I've seen. It. So, and all kidding aside, whether you are someone who's living in like Beaverlick, Kentucky, my favorite place. Um, it really is a town, look it up. Um, and you really, and you want to learn about remote work and whether you're 18 or whether you're 118, exactly. this is a good beginner's course. It's for lack of a better term, it's almost like the dummies guide too, because they'll walk you through A through Z. Mm -hmm. And if you're someone who either owns a business or is doing remote work and you're like, my, I'm, my eyes are tired, I'm tired. I'm not getting what I want. The mastery side of it. I right. think is, is also a very good course. So you can either, if, depending on what your situation is, you can do A, you can do B, or you can just do C. It's like a Chinese menu. But so you see, you do, you're like, my eyes get tired. Most people, they don't know like the different types of lamps that you should be using and what it right. does to your uh, to your brain and to your eyes. They use the right. same lamp for everything. And then they wonder like, oh my God, my eyes, my brain. There's a sign or, or the or the same bulb or the same this. I like the fact with the smells. I'm very big on smells. For me to work successfully is scotch and cigar smells. There you go. Uh, right. yeah. Our drinking scotch and cigar. Yeah, he, all the time. he was all about that. So, yeah, so but, 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 everybody, but that's what I'm saying. Everybody's mentality is different. And if this can help get somebody an extra 10 or 20 percent at their job. Exactly. This is right. like 10 or 20%. Because if, if you're the boss and you buy this for your crew 
and you can get an extra 15 or 20 percent productivity out of somebody mm -hmm. and less sick days and less this and less that you exactly. become a superstar if exactly. you're just an employee and you're like you know i could use the mastery to better myself and get further ahead or better my life mm -hmm. then you're a superstar in your own life so i think the, the mastery side is a win-win. I think the beginning of the course is a win-win for people that like, you. we have internet, yeah, like, like you know, we have, what's internet? Um, mm -hmm. and, and it sounds kind of funny, but if you look at some of the older people that want to do remote work, mm -hmm. you know, they sit down at a computer. Now, not all of them, but probably 50% of them sit down at a computer and they're like, oh my God, where you guys can literally take them from like, here's how you turn it on. And yeah. this is everything you do, how to set up a proper LinkedIn. So people of a certain age don't have LinkedIn. People of a certain age, you right. know, remote work, what's that? That's crazy. So mm. it's a way for them to learn it and go, wow, I could do this. Exactly. Um, you know, as, and Globe is getting smaller. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see how it does. But I'm, I'm not, I'm promoting it all. But for like what I would look at for me and for the people that we have would be the mastery side because of the smells and the stretching and whatever. Because apparently, you know, beating them, they complain. So we keep beating them. <laughs> I think it's fair. Um, so anymore. Right, yeah, until the until the complaining stops. It is what it is. <laughs> so this may be something else we'll try um, and see if this works. So, but I think it's a I think it's a really good thing. And just make sure though, if you do the mastery course and you own a business, that people sign waivers for the butt squeezing. Apparently, <laughs> in some states that's illegal. Not in certain countries. So there you go. But no, that was I like that. So we'll hopefully continue success with this because um, I know some of the deals in your pipeline because I've seen your spreadsheet. Um, so hopefully <laughs> if you can get one or two of those, that would be really cool. Cause yeah. it would be nice to have you back and tell us the success of it. Um, and it would really be cool to hear from the one guy at some point, what he thought yeah. of the course, mm -hmm. you know, that yeah. would be cool to bring him on if he wants to put up with the lunacy, but it would be fun to hear like what he thought and what he did and what his thoughts were. Great idea. So as you get students and stuff, let us know. And we'd love to just interview them because I think that for the people that are listening and watching going, eh, it's all this, it's all that. And then they hear like a real person, exactly. like John and I taking it would be useless because it's us, right? So people are like, oh, whatever. But hearing a real person would be very interesting. Just They said, oh, I, I didn't know this, or I didn't know that. Or that, you know, the mastery side, I tried this oil, or I tried this bulb, or I tried this, and it made everything. That would be, I think, very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing is, like, that's why we're pushing the course where, where Michael is going to be teaching an hour of content every week because it will cool. have also the chat bot and they'll be able to ask us directly questions because, you know, me and him, we did the course as best of our abilities. We reviewed it right. with uh, some people and with Chad. But, you know, out there, there are a bunch of people that maybe, uh, I mean, I hope they'll have questions. I mean, I hope the course is, you know, like pretty solid, which I really right. believe it is. But, you know, there's always some tweaking. It's going to be interesting yeah. to see with our first whole, very, very soon we'll have our first pilot of students see uh, okay. the, like, the interaction, like grow together and see what's needed, see what's great, see what, what's maybe missing. And right. um, hopefully not much, but. <laughs> Listen, even if stuff's missing, you got to have some guinea pigs. So, oh, yeah. you know, to go. You have to have an alpha test before you can go to the next level, yeah. right? That's right. I think it's very cool. Very, very cool. Well, Mirsh, it was always, it's always good to see me. Um, so I'm glad you can make it. So, uh, John, we're, John and I and Michael now are going to do Lost and Found, which we are not going to do. But thank you for coming. And right. seriously, keep us abreast of what's going on. Um, I will. And and if people buy just the mastery side, we'd love to hear from someone then that does that as well. Yeah. Um, because I think, like I said, this is very, it's, it is part of business, keeping m people's health, healthy Thank mind, you. body, and spirit. Yeah, so, yeah, I think that's really important. Yes. If any yeah. business, as much as we joke there. around about it, as, as much as we joke around about it, I think it's important. But yeah, if any so, except business, the people that are hanging there, themselves. If you want to upscale your people and make them happier and more productive, reach out. Yeah. We definitely can do group discounts for Ooh. the big coaches out there. So, yes. Yeah, Hilgo's so House of Pain. Call her. I'm just saying, because yeah, you got to keep the employees happy there. Oh, I'm my saying. goodness. <laughs> Love you, my dear. It's always good oh, to see goodness. you. All right, everybody. We're going to pay the bill one more time, and then we're going to go into Lost and Found. Get the freedom and the flexibility of remote work in the lucrative tech industry. Bend your life around, around the world. Bandicoot is the premier course and community for thriving in a remote tech career. Join the revolution today. Bandicoot.com. 
official partner of the Lost Dollar Business Club. Ever wonder how millions vanish into thin air or how a single dollar can make all the difference? Join us on Lost and Found, where we dive into the wild world of financial mysteries. From misplaced fortunes to unexpected windfalls, we unravel the stories of people, companies, organizations, and even governments who've lost and found millions. Lost and found, because every dollar has a story. And here we oh, are. Right. <laughs> Is that? Actually, we're not going to have a video about bread or anything because David's gone for a fortnight. So it's just we're, three of we're us. Missing that. We're missing that. Well, I you know, know as an advance. <laughs> John, do you do you have something to start to start off with? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so the Federation for American Immigration Reform uh, oh did a study that in 2023 approximately 150 billion in US taxpayer money was doled out for government services and support for about 20 million illegal immigrants in the country. So 20, 150 billion for 20 million. 20 million? That's a lot of money. What they get <laughs> like Lamborghinis and Porsches right. and Rolls Royces or uh, no, they get they get uh, debit cards, they get uh, Free rent, uh, you know. Free rent. The, yeah, I'm here illegally. <laughs> yeah, where, where's the? Where's where, the how, where do I sign up? That's crazy. Wow, twenty million people got hundred and fifty billion dollars. Yeah, worth California stuff. spent thirty billion. Texas spent thir thirteen billion. New York State, oh. basically New York City, ten billion. Florida wow. got, spent eight billion. New Jersey five. You know, there's a, and the number. Wow goes on but um so it's so, a lot of money um yeah no uh, is i agree. That a lot profound that's a uh, that's you know depending <laughs> on who you talking yeah. i think i think if you're an immigrant it's a found thing if you're the american taxpayer yeah. you're looking at going what that would yeah. be spent 100 but you know what's really funny in the big scheme of things with our 70 trillion dollar deficit that we piss away stupid money on all the time it's nothing you know what I mean? It's just like it literally is nothing if you look at it. Now, if the U.S. government would take 150 billion and help our own citizens out that yeah. are in, the thing in is, and poor or need help, that would be good. And the thing is, it's not a federal outlay; oh, okay. it's a state outlay, and which it's a oh. far different kettle of fish because the states don't have the printing press that the, the federal government has. Right. So it's it's a you know new york city you know and all these cities that have become sanctuary cities right the mayor of new york is now saying you know we need to get rid of the sanctuary city because we we're going bankrupt uh <laughs> yeah you can do math you can do math congratulations yeah so, uh, we great. can't we can't support this level of uh of expenditure in uh, ad infinitum and you know yeah. these people are not going away so um, welcome welcome to the real world know, now kids tied to that tied to that you know the the, the last quarter the deficit of the federal government was 380 billion which right. was this last quarter yeah last yeah quarter. so this was the the expected was 250 billion so it's way over the even the the sort of the consensus forecast right mm -hmm. uh and, and that we like to to that, the American the, public the quarterly, the quarterly interest rate uh, yeah. uh, payment was a trillion dollars. And so, nice. Yeah. So, so we have no money. Trillion dollars. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Here's and let me just so, say for all the black projects that lots we of get, lost. Um, I would we say we want to thank you. Yeah, we would like we want to thank the American public uh, for your money, and uh, we're going to keep spending it. So yeah, it's let's gotta go somewhere. Yeah, well, at the end of the day, nobody's going to get it under control because governments are printing presses. I think the last time we had a balanced anything was with the Clinton. There was a there was a um, it was a surplus, and everybody got their big check. You're not going to see that again because you'd actually have to cut back everybody with their handout um, that's in the government and government agencies and government black pride, blah, blah blah and military, and they'd all have a heart attack. So. As long as the world is okay with every country as a printing press, we're good to go. And that's it. So as much as I'm not a fan of it, 
it's just a fact of life. And until you get a president, and I don't think we have one coming down the road anytime soon with that kind of balls to really cut things back, you're not going to see it. So it's just something we're going to have to get used to, unfortunately, or tie it back to gold. And then that'll be interesting. So, well, there you go. That's John, all yeah, John, gold. Yeah, no, I was gonna <laughs> say, it, it, yeah, politicians won't do it because, you know, three quarters of the budget is Social Security, the military, and Medicare, right? So the, the right. potential cuts are, that are easy, you know, it, it's a small piece of the pie. And the, yeah, the, but taking Social Security the is bullshit because those that, people put in for 100 years, you're not mm -hmm. taking this. So you, sh you don't take that because they put in all that money. Then unless you're going to give them their money back, you can't. I saw I got my little thing of what I put in my Social Security and what I get. So if you're going to cut my thing, then I want all my money back. So they're not going to do that. So you got to keep social and Medicare. Yeah, I think the government is for the people that can't afford it. I think the government does have to take care of their people. They work well, hard. Is, Medicare is, you know, is, you know, is a, is, is a huge behemoth right that's oh i'm sure yeah but the, because nobody takes care of it nobody tries to make it into what it is you know what i mean like they're not running anything like a business they run everything like drunken sailors in a whorehouse because they have the money to do it and no one says you can't do that we have a budget they're like yeah yeah go whatever they don't negotiate they don't do this they don't do that like when my mom went to the hospital she was on i would see the, the medical bills that medicare would pay and then I would look at the same exact thing if I went to the hospital and um, my insurance company has negotiated like 90%. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So I'd see a bill for her to say for $300,000. And I would, I would call my company and go, hey, if I did this, what would my bill be? They'd be, oh, your bill that we would pay. And then blah, blah, blah. it'd be like, you know, 25000 So it's the government's fault that the government doesn't negotiate because the government has their head up their ass. So you oh, can't but, fault oh, the people. Oh, 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 be careful because – Every year, there's a small board that mm. convenes oh. in, in Washington, D.C., right, that mm -hmm. sets the prices for Medicare. And all medical bill, um, pricing is based yeah. off that, of that uh, you know, you know uh, uh, table, yeah. let's call it, right? Okay. So, well, they know, do a shit job. You know, so they do negotiate, but you know, they don't negotiate crap, John. It's like a five-year-old negotiating because they don't care. And I'm sure their board is all the guys who run hospitals, so they don't care. You need to get literally like the soccer mom from Iowa that has to manage, you know, family of four on a budget of X. Let her negotiate. Let someone who knows how to negotiate negotiate. Even my insurance company, who I don't like, they negotiate. A, are you kidding? When I went to the hospital a few months ago for something, I saw what the original bill was and I saw what they paid. I'm like, literally 95% of the bill, they've negotiated down. So no, Medicare does a suck job. I don't care what their board does and their board sucks. And they need to get people in there that know how to do it. We, hear so. we, we need somebody from Medicare on this show to talk about They it. won't come on this show. Are you kidding? They're pussies. So. Yeah. Anyway, the, the bottom line is, you know, whether the, you know, so if politicians don't uh, stop spending the yeah. the realities of, 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 the, of the debt will eventually catch up. When that is, well, that's a difficult one to answer. Yeah. So Soon. Probably next week. So, <laughs> yeah. We at the Lizard people want to say thank you. I thought. <laughs> yeah. All right, Michael, what do you have? I got, well, I got uh, I got good news from Waymo. Remember I took that driverless car in San yes, Francisco? Yes, you did. Yeah. You did. Yes. They gave you so, Waymo for free. No. Waymo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not a sponsor at this point, but Waymo's driverless cars yeah. are actually much safer than uh, than people driving. So they've driven okay. these. There's, now, remember, they only do intercity right, right. Uh, travel, but... They've driven 22 million miles and only had 20 accidents compared wow. to 64 accidents for the human drivers yeah. in 22 million miles. So they, they, I told you, they drive slower. They, they, right. They're much more cautious, but maybe it's better in the end, a lot safer. Uh, the, the problem is human drivers keep rear-ending the slow-going Waymos. Waymo so, cars, I love it. That's great. <laughs> I yeah, love that. That's, that's fun. That's well, the Waymo, the Waymo cars drive like an Opacaca in South Florida. 
that's in I-95 on the far left lane doing 40 <laughs> miles an hour when you should be doing 65. I get what they're doing. So, of course, it's safer. And then you get the crazy guys that are like, beep, 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 and they don't realize there's nobody they don't driving. Realize, that's right. There's nobody there, was a, there was a video out a couple weeks ago, maybe even longer, a police officer pulled over, whether it was Google or a Waymo car, because it was going the wrong way in a street. And when they got up to the car, there was nobody there. And the officer was just laughing. He's like, I have no idea what to do. I can't, who do you write a ticket to? And apparently there was no one it could talk, he could talk to. So it's like they didn't know how to turn the car around. So I guess they finally got a tow truck to do whatever they needed. But it was hysterical to watch him like, okay, wh what am I supposed to do here? You know, because I can't let you go down the wrong way type no, of thing. So it was, very, it was very interesting. So I like that. All right. Well, it's right, coming well, at some point. Waymo. It's coming. It's happening. Good for Waymo. Congratulations. Well, that's like that's that. a dollar win right. for them. And I got, I got one more for you. This is a sure. this is another, another softball, but a big one, is that Voyager 1, you know, that yeah. was launched 47 years ago. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Out into space. They just fixed a, a thruster. And it's yeah. it's like it's it's still going to go on. It's going to continue nice. going on. It's 15 billion miles away, and it's still going. So those guys are nice. doing great. That is awesome. That's a, now that's an American. That's, that's one. There you yeah, go. That's, 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 a, that's a good product. Yeah. Hey, and but and Boeing, take heed. Take heed. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, that's right. Take heed, Boeing. You know, don't leave astronauts in space. So that'll be good. Voyager may have to swing around and pick them up on the way home. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you never know. Mine is literally about the presidential debate. And all I can say is, I, you know, I, I wasn't a fan or not a fan of Miss Harris. We all know Trump is Trump. But I will say kudos to Miss Harris. She schooled him like a five-year-old boy. And I give that's, her lots of credit. Heard. Yeah, she. I watched it. And I said, if, when it started, I said, he'll be presidential for the first maybe 20 minutes. And she's going to bait him. And within 20 minutes, he will be Donald Trump. And it's exactly what happened. And I watched the whole thing, especially when ABC News said, um, no, we've talked to the city that he claimed in Ohio that Haitians were eating dogs. And they said, there's no police reports of people eating dogs. And everything he said that was not true, they it literally disproved live during the debate. And I was like, kudos to the ABC News for having the balls to do that. Kudos to Ms. Harris for putting an excellent debate. Um, and apparently Mr. Trump doesn't want to debate her again. I can see why. Um, and hopefully now we have a um, a better presidential election. Um, and we'll see what well, happens. I wish they would talk, you know, these debates, I wish they would talk about real policies that have been proposed. I do too. Real policies. Yeah. That, you know, it, these debates are, they're shows. They're not. But you, you can't, I, but unfortunately you can't have a real debate like that because one of them lies all the time and goes off on a tangent. Right. And, and, and. Harris tried to talk about things because they'd asked her a question. And then he, Trump would be like, but they're eating dogs in uh, Ohio. All right. Well, it's hard to have a real debate about health. I think it's been a lot longer. Policy. I think these debates have been far. No, I agree with you. Policy discussion but but here's the problem, though. I don't think the American public is smart enough. Most of the American public is they want to show. They want to debate. You and I and John want to debate. We want to see, like, we, we invite them to come on our show. We know they're not. <laughs> we want to ask them real questions. Like, so tell me about the economy. Like, you know, it takes three right, years. Right. Before you got the, So you are going to inherit this, or you inherited that, and blah, 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 blah. And so tell me about what you're going to do with this. Not some BS rhetoric that your, your consultant told you to read, but, like, what do you think? Like, what are we going to do about And just have, like, a one-on-one -on -one for, like, 30 minutes. And let them, whether it takes them three minutes or four hours to answer the question, Fine, but they don't want to do that, and the television and it's not good television. So you know they don't want to come on our show because we would ask real questions, and no, nobody wants to answer a real question. And we even listen. We've sent the emails. We've invited oh, yeah. David, them on David, all our shows. It. David sent the emails to Trump and David to Harris said. and said, "You can come on our, any of our shows and talk to whichever host that you like the best to answer questions." And nobody wants to come on. Yes, I know we're just a little pissant channel, and that's fine. But we have asked them to come on. You never know. Maybe in the next presidential due diligence. Due diligence. Look, you're never gonna week. get. You're never gonna get a politician to actually have a honest conversation with you about the the policies, the real policies that they want to implement. Because a lot of times they go against what they're. Oh yeah, they won't get elected. <laughs> they won't get elected, or they, you know. 
they don't want you to know um, right. yeah. a good yeah. a good we, many times we, because they have they have, yeah. because they have other constituents yeah that they have to worry have, about yeah that have that they've paid for yeah. the campaign that they have to satisfy. suck up to yeah, yeah. Well, we actually we invited when the UFO thing was going on with Congress and the Senate we actually mm -hmm. invited those senators and Congress people on the show to talk about the military industrial complex and UFOs. And we, and we invited all 30 of them, emails, phone calls. We did that. We did what, we, and we got out of all 30, we got four replies back that said, we'd love to, but it's something we really can't talk about. So we, out of 30, we only got four replies back. And I'm saying to myself, the rest of you suck. Cause technically I'm paying your salary. You oh, should yeah. be able to at least reply to me and say, no, we can't come on your show. So the four people that did reply to us, kudos for you to realize who pays your salary. And to the 26 that don't, you're just scum. And there you go. I mean, and that's the problem. Like if you're not a big donor, they don't return your call. They don't do this. Like So the, the smaller ones that we spoke to, their people were great. They tried. They said, we'll talk to them for you. They thought it was a cool idea because I think they think it's an interesting subject. Um, I'm sure when they asked higher up the chain, they were like, no, you're not going to talk about that. So, but you know, we try, we try to get interesting guests to come on. Noosh was good. I like and we do, And we do have interesting guests coming on next week. We've got Michael. Noosh was great. That was a great yeah. conversation. We're going to have another great one with Michael Collins next week. Of course. So uh, remember to, uh, remember to, yeah. to like subscribe and, and, and yeah. recommend anybody else we should get on the show. And then we have universal income guy coming in October. Wow. That's right. That's right. Guy Standing. Guy Standing, author of uh, Basic Income. Uh, he's wrote about the precariat, which is a new class of people who are on living on the edge. Uh, very dangerous situation. Uh, he'll be talking wow. about that, too. It'll be fun. All right. Well, It'll everybody, thank you for watching. We will be back. At some point, we're going to do this live on Friday. We broadcasting on a Saturday. We just have to figure that out. Probably not the Michael Collins show, but after that, maybe we will. Um, you can catch us wherever you get your podcast for look under two old farts making noises, wherever you get your podcast and look for lost dollar business club within the there. You can see the show catch us here every Saturday morning. Um, if there's anything you'd like us to talk about, leave a comment. If you don't like us, you know, let us know. And we know you don't like David, so you can say anything you want. He won't be reading anything for a fortnight and we'll see everybody next week. Guys have a wonderful day. Everybody have a wonderful day. We'll see y'all later. Cheers. See ya.